Today on 3-Minute Analytical Chemistry, we're going to be talking about monochromators. Now, the word monochromator comes from the Greek mono meaning one, chroma meaning color, and ater meaning something that does a thing. So a monochromator's job is to separate light into one color. This is important because when you make chemical measurements, oftentimes we use light to study the interaction of light with matter, or the chemical system we're studying. That typically is a function of the color of light that hits it, the wavelength of light that hits it. So we need to be able to control in a precise manner what wavelength of light, the color of light that's interacting with our sample. Well, a common monochromator design is the Cherney-Turner design that I have drawn here on the board. The Cherney-Turner design has an entrance slit where we let polychromatic light of many colors into our system. This then hits a concave mirror whose job it is to create parallel rays or columnated light that will then strike our diffraction grating. This light needs to be parallel so that it can hit our diffraction grating all at the same angle. Isaac Newton used the sun as his uh, parallel light source when he did his original experiments on optics. This diffraction grating will then separate light into many colors. Here we have our red light coming off at a certain angle and the blue light will be separated at a different angle, a greater angle. So we have this spread of light that will then strike another mirror, a concave mirror, and this mirror's job is to focus the light onto an exit slit. Here the red light's going to be focused right at our exit slit, so it will be allowed to come out of our monochromator, and our blue light is going to be focused to a different point. It's going to hit the wall and not exit our monochromator. So our exit slit will set a certain range of wavelengths that are allowed to exit. We then use this light to make our chemical measurement on the other side. If you look right here, I've drawn a intensity versus wavelength plot for the light that leaves this monochromator. It's going to be peaked at my red, uh, which I just gave a wavelength of 800 nanometers, and it's going to have a certain spread, a delta lambda, at the full width at half max. This is sort of something we can use to characterize how good my monochromator does at separating light from other components. It really is a range of wavelengths that leaves my monochromator. A good monochromator has at least a one nanometer type response. In other words, I can have a control of my wavelength down to one nanometer. I wanted to go over the diffraction grading equation so that you have an appreciation for how diffraction gratings can function. I have the equation up here and it says that the diffraction order times the wavelength of light equals d, where d is the spacing of my diffraction grating times the sine alpha plus sine beta. Alpha is the angle that my incident light hits my diffraction grating at, my parallel light rays. And beta is the angle that the different wavelengths of light will leave at. So for any one get, given wavelength, you can solve the angle. Here for this example, if we look at the first diffraction order with spacing of 5 microns, you can solve and get the blue wavelength of 400 nanometers leaving at about 25 degrees, while the red will leave at about 20 degrees in terms of their angle that leaves. So to generate uh, an instrument that can select a different wavelengths, we can then change the incident angle by rotating this diffraction grating. What that does is focus the light at different points on the exit slit so that we can control the wavelength of light that will hit it and then go on to do chemistry.